Hi guys, in this video I want to do a little regression analysis and specifically focus on a quantity called R square or also known as coefficient of determination in simple linear regression and coefficient of multiple determination in multiple regression. Okay, And I want to take a very data applied kind of approach to this uh, to this video okay so first off what we're looking at here is just some generic data I want you to focus on this as the data I've already taken the time to calculate some summary statistics so that we can get that out of the way and you can see that down here so the sum of each variable uh, the mean and the standard deviation of each of these variables okay so you can kind of glance at that at your own leisure actually this is a number that I, I will use in this um, tutorial so um, the rest is just some good summary statistics at the least okay so what I would typically do is start out exploring the variables with some descriptive statistics maybe create some scatter plots a scatter plot matrix so calculate some correlation coefficients and start determining whether a linear model would be appropriate here. Uh, clearly, as I've indicated here, my y variable is this guy, this first column. And these are my two predictors. So in the context of regression, remember that we reserve, typically reserve the letter y for the dependent variable, sometimes called the response variable or the outcome variable. And we, uh, by convention, reserve x for potential predictors. But predictors, also known as independent variables, explanatory variables. Okay, so take this as, as just um, the scenario where we want to predict this variable using these two. Okay. So clearly we have a variable we're trying to predict that's numerical and we have two predictors. You should be very quickly thinking that multiple linear regression may be appropriate here. So that's how we're going to go forward here. I don't want to focus on every aspect of regression, multiple regression here, but just on R squared. So um, with that said, let's say I, I've done all that exploratory work and I want to jump into running my model. So using a software like Excel isn't the most powerful for doing statistical analysis, but it is good for illustrating some fundamental concepts. So, so that's why we're here. So I'm going to use the analysis tool pack, which if you don't have, you have to add in file options, add-ins, go, and make sure this is checked off. Okay, click OK, and when you click OK, under the data ribbon, you'll find data analysis. So click that. Here you just have a host of just some, some basic, uh, fundamental, useful stats, techniques, and regression is one of them. So let's pick regression. And what we are asked for here is basically just two things. What's your Y variable? And what's your X or X's? So in this case, we have two. They have to be next to each other. I highlight both of them. Since I highlighted the labels, I make sure to check that. And there's a lot of other things that we can look at here, residual analysis and so forth. But we're just going to focus, like I said, on, uh, on learning about R squared. So let's just get the basic output and throw the output perhaps over here. I'll scroll left. I'll have to scroll left and right so that I can keep this zoomed enough so that you can see. But let's just scroll right and let me just highlight some important values from this output that we're going to focus on. Um, not everything here is going to be in the purview of, of my discussion. So what I'm interested in here is the R square number. Okay. There's also an adjusted R square. In fact, there are other variations of R square, but they all kind of start with the most basic, and that's what I want to focus on. Okay, so so already we know what R square is. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to see if I could arrive at this number myself, and in the process, kind of understand how that number was arrived at and more about what it means than just the definition we're usually asked to accept. So this, this is going to start with a lot, of, we're going to do a little bit of work and we're going to let the software help us. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is first imagine the case 
where I well, 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 let's start with this. What's my goal in all this? My goal in all this, let's not forget, is to be able to learn about the variable y from the two variables x1 and x2. Okay? And furthermore, if I could learn about y from these two, then I can predict y. Okay? Even before all that, there is an assumption that these two guys are related to this guy. And if, if I kind of determined that that might be the case, then I might want to use information about f uh, th from these two variables to predict this variable. That's the kind of goal here. So let's not forget that. Now, let me come back and say, imagine the case where I want to predict y, but all of a sudden, I don't have either of these guys. So all I have is this what's called univariate data, right? Just one variable. And I want to learn about it. And I want to be able to take what I've learned and be able to make a prediction, OK? So if this is the case, I ask you, as I oftentimes ask my class, what would be the best prediction you could make in your eyes? And invariably, people come up with the mean as their response to that question. And that is a very good response, OK? So let's go with the mean. In fact, before I do that, let me plot these. So very quickly, I'm going to make just a plot that's going to help us visualize what we're doing here. So it's going to be a really simple plot. Uh, that's why I have this column here. Don't pay much attention to that column. It's just so I can make my simple plot here. All this plot is, as you'll see in a second, is showing the y values. Okay, so there is no x-axis to talk of. Okay, so so let, let me go ahead and just delete a whole bunch of these things, and so we can focus on what's important here. Okay, there's no x-axis to talk of. Okay, here are my y values plotted. Let me just pull this. Okay. So I clearly see uh, these guys represented in like this in the, in the space, right? So each of these dots comes from one of these observations. Um, by the way, I have 22 observations. If you highlight here, you'll see you have 22 observations. So here is, for example, point uh, the value 1866. So this is this guy plotted, okay? And the same goes for the rest of the 21 points. Okay, so clearly what I see here, what I learned from here, is that there's variation in my data. If I want to make a prediction for the, let's say, 23rd observation that I can't see, well, the best thing I could do is try to learn from these guys and to make an educated guess. If I, even, if I didn't even have this data, then I would be just guessing from, from like in, in a very qualitative way. But even having this data, I should be able to make, to make a better than uh, a better guess than just just from my gut. So I guess 1225 for the I, I use the mean. Okay, let's see what happens. Let me also on top of this plot the mean, and I'll try to do this in a different color. So here's the mean 1225. And it, it became red, which is great, so we could see it clearly. Okay, maybe I can make it a little bigger or something. Okay. All right, there's the mean. So what's the mean? You can think of the mean always as the center of gravity. Okay, so if you were to kind of put your finger right on that red dot and hold this horizontally, you would see that the, these, these points would balance at that point. Okay, now if you were to calculate the distance from the mean to each of these points individually, that we'll, we're going to start doing that, you'd get y minus y bar. Let's call the mean y bar, right? So we can do that. Equals this minus y bar. So negative 252, that's the distance from this guy 
to the mean. And so that means he's probably down here somewhere, right? And then I could just repeat this for the rest of these observations. Okay. Now, a peculiar thing for someone who hasn't studied this before is that the sum of these, what we call in statistics, deviations from the mean will always be zero. Let's actually confirm that so I can do equals sum here. In fact, it's zero. And so obviously the mean will be zero. So we don't really need to go there. The important thing here is to, is to realize why the mean of a group of observations is always going to be perfectly counteracting the observations above and the observations below. So there's going to be a balance there. So all the negatives you see here are perfectly counteracting with the positives here. Okay, And so they're always going to sum to 0. So in statistics, we oftentimes want to measure variability. And it seems like a good place to start by subtracting y from y bar. But that doesn't give us really much to work with if it's always going to sum up to 0. So what we do is we typically square these numbers. Because you know when you square, you take care of that problem of negatives counteracting positives. So let's do that in the next column. And this is simply going to be everything in this column squared. Let's drag that down. And these numbers can get quite big. Okay, And let's actually get rid of these decimals. That's the problem. Okay, They're there, but we don't need to look at them. What I'm after here is the sum of this column. Okay. And if you think about it, if you go back to your formula for variance, it was the sum of all the values minus their mean squared over n minus 1. And the sum, by the way, was from 1 to n. Right? So that's what we did here. And then we sum them up. So basically what I've done here is to get the numerator in the formula for sample variance. And that's that number right here, 2,507,793. OK? Now, let's go forward with this. So we have something here interesting. OK? So this, if we were to divide this by n minus 1, would give us the sample variance. If we were to just leave this number as is, we have a name for this as well in statistics. Uh, you'll, have, you'll see this acronym, S, capital S, S, Y, or even sometimes in text, some text, S, S, total. So it really doesn't matter which one you go with, but just to understand what they mean. SS in statistics stands for sum of squares. And if you see what we did here, we summed the squares of something. And the sum of squares with the y means I summed the, y, the squares of y. Sum of squares total means I've summed the, it's the, or you could read it as total sum of squares, that t for total. Okay, So this number represents for us a measurement of the total variability in the variable y. Okay, We can further divide that number and get uh, standard deviations and variance and other calculations. But this number here is also a way of measuring the total variability. It's a rawer way. Rawer. <laughs> OK? Now, this, the importance of this in our discussion of r square is going to be to serve as our baseline. So this, you can think of this as the baseline. This is how much variability there is in the variable we're trying to predict. That's this guy. Before we introduce any of those predictors that we might want to use. Okay. Notice I didn't talk about x1 and x2 yet here. Okay. So watch part two, and I'm going to continue this discussion. And I'm actually going to bring those guys into play. All right. So be sure to watch part two.